Begin, Uttra. Okay, good morning to Principal Ma'am, Vice Principal Sir, of the English faculty. On behalf of the Eleven, I want to do online IT project and we are here with us and Chris and, and to let you know that the can, uh, pandemic cannot stop us from enacting this. A small effort has been uh, made by us with the guidance of our English ma'am. Enact a play on the importance of mother and the family and the due respect that all members should give to her. The play is based on the chapter in our syllabus Mother's Day. Uh, ma'am, uh, do we have a permission to begin? Yes, begin. Mother is the name for God in the lips and hearts of children. A mother is a precious gem in one's life. Let's feel this by this song. However, it is not always the case in the play of ours. We would like to show how insensitive the children are toward their mother, how they take her for granted and didn't care for her feelings. This play is acted by the students of class 11 of Dr. Rajinder Prasad Kent Vidhyale, President's E-State, New Delhi. A, a very warm good morning to everyone. Today, we are here with a story of Mother's Day from the snapshot. I am Pius as the narrator of this story. And the characters of this story are Disha as Mrs. Annie Pearson. She is a pleasant and worried woman. Nidhi as Mrs. Fitzgerald. 
She is older, heavier, and a fortune teller with a bold personality. She is smoking. Dhruv, as Mr. George Pearson, husband of Mrs. Annie Pearson. Vanshika, as Doris Pearson, daughter of Mrs. Annie Pearson. Krishna, as Cyril Pearson, son of Mrs. Annie Pearson. And this act is organized by Mrs. Abita Kali, ma'am. Such as this awesome opportunity to us, we all are very thankful to ma'am. Let's look into the story. Husband and children not treat Mrs. Pearson well. So her neighbor, Mrs. Fitzgerald, decided to learn them a lesson. The scene starts with Mrs. Pearson and Mrs. Fitzgerald talking to her, each other and Mrs. Pearson shares about mistreating her by her family members. And that's all I can tell you, Mrs. Pearson. It could be a good one or a bad one. All depends on yourself now. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Fitzgerald. I am much obliged. It's wonderful having a real fortune teller living next door. Did you learn that magic? Yes, I did. Twelve years I had for it. Now make up your mind, dear. Put your foot down and be the boss of your own family. That said, that done. I'm so fond of them, even they are selfish. But uh, it would be better for them if they learn to treat you properly. Yes, I suppose it would, in a way. No doubt it at all. Do you think it is right to take their orders as if you were a servant? Husbands, sons, daughters should take care of their wives and mothers and not giving them orders and treating them like a dirt. I suppose it is, but I do hate unpleasantness. I don't know how to begin and they will be home at any time. Let them wait or look after themselves for once. I agree with you, but uh, I just can't. Then let me do it. Oh, thank you very much. And really, I couldn't blame them and you couldn't blame me. We can change our places. I mean, bodies. But that's impossible. But I worked it out. It will only last for some time and that's enough for the work we want to do. Is it right to do? It is your only chance. Now stop worrying and give me your hands. Mrs. Fitzgerald spells some mantras. <laughs> And they change their bodies and personalities. Now, Mrs. Annie Pearson is bold because she has soul of Mrs. Fitzgerald. And Mrs. Fitzgerald is nervous and filtering because she has soul of Mrs. Annie Pearson. See what I mean, dear? Oh, it's happened. Of course it happened. Very neat. But I don't want to be anybody else. Stop worrying. It is your only chance. What I am going to do now? Go to my house. There is nobody. Better get off now before any of them comes. Yes. Are you sure it will be all right? Yes, it will be wonderful. After a few moments, Doris Pearson comes bursting in life. She is a pretty girl in her early 20s. Mom. You will have to iron my yellow silk. I must wear it tonight, so I wanted iron. You what want are you to doing my yellow silk? Where are you going? Out with Charlie Spence. But why? Why shouldn't I go out with him? Can't you find anybody better instead of buck teeth and half witted? Oh, shut up. He isn't. I'm living. <laughs> Doris leaves in the left and Cyril enters into the room. Hello, mom. Is the tea ready? No. Why not, mom? 
I couldn't bother. What's the idea then? Just a change. Well, change your mind, mom. I don't have much time. I have plenty of time. Yes, mom, but I have not time. Got busy tonight. Do you put my things out, mom? Can't remember, but I doubt it. You said you would look through them first if there was any repairing, but you don't, mom. Well, yes, but uh, now I have decided I don't like repairing. That's a nice way to talk, mom. What if we all talk like that? You all do talk like that. You don't do anything but want me to do everything. I don't get this, mom. What's going on? Now Doris entered the room after changing her clothes. Changes. You look terrible. I wouldn't wear that face even for Charlie Spence. Stop talking about Charlie. Anyhow, I am not ready yet. Just dressing. And if I do look terrible, it's your fault. You made me cry. Why? What she do? Never you mind. Mm -hmm. Now Mrs. Annie Pearson left the room to take beer. Doris and Cyril start their conversation. Has she been like that with you too? Yes. Well, I thought I had done something wrong. I too thought it. She was smoking and playing cards when I came in, and I couldn't believe my eyes. I asked her if she was feeling off color, and she says she was not. Well, she suddenly all different. She made me cry. Her. And do you think she have hit her head or something? Unlikely. What is it? She might have concussion. Mrs. Pearson joined them with beer and glass. You two are always talking of being grown up. Why don't you try once to be of your age? Can't we laugh now, Mom? Yes, you can. If it is funny, go on. Tell me. Make me laugh. You never understand jokes, Mom. I was yawning at your jokes even before you were born, Doris. Hmm. What is making you to talk like this? What we have done? Nothing. If you don't get the tea ready, then I will find something to eat myself, Mom. Why not? Help yourself. I have been working for all days. Eight hours a day. Yes, eight hours a day, and don't forget it, Mom. I have done my eight hours. That's different. Of course, it is different. It was. Now it isn't. Forty hours in a week for all now. Just look it at the weekend when I have my two days off. I have to keep my stand up to speak. Mummy, you don't mean you are not going to do anything on Saturday and Sunday. Well, I wouldn't go so far. I might do a bit of cooking as favor. Perhaps might go off in weekends. Go off for the weekends. Of course, I could do for a change. If I don't need a change, who does? But where would you go? That's my business. You don't ask. Hmm. Did you have hit yourself with something? No, but I will hit you with something if you won't stop asking such silly questions. Oh, that's awful! <laughs> stop blubbering. You are not a baby. You are old enough to behave properly. Mr. George Pearson enters and sees Doris blubbering. Hey, you will see. Doris runs out left. Did she say, "You will see"? Yes. What did it mean? 
बेटर आज घर इज दैट बियर यस वाट ड्रिंकिंग बियर बिकॉज आई फैंसी राइट by the way i forgot to tell you this morning i would not want any tea that's right there is no tea ready that's very well but suppose i had wanted you don't ask a glass of beer in the club if you will do they will laugh at you even more than they do now then why should i make tea for you a non caring guy they laugh at me Of course they do. You are one of their standing jokes. Famous. They call you Pompey Pompey Pearson because they think that you are slow, fatty, and pompous. Never, never, never. It's always beaten me why you should want to spend so much time at a place where they are always laughing at you behind your backs, leaving your wife at home night after night instead of going out with her. Who doesn't make you look fool? Cyril enters right with a glass of milk in one hand and a thick slice of cake in other. Hey Cyril, you have been with me to the club once or twice. Tell mom that don't laugh at me and not come. Go on and tell me. Well, yes, dad, yes. I am afraid they do. Well, I will be damned. Mrs. Pitzal enters into the room. Come in, come in, Mrs. Pitzal. Is everything all right? No, it is not. Of course, it is. You better be quiet, son. Oh dear, what's happening? Just putting them in their places. Hello Mrs Fritzeral Hello dear I thought you were going out with Charlie Spence tonight What is that to do with you Stop that No it's all right No it isn't I won't have a daughter of mine talking to anybody like this Now answer Mrs Fritzeral properly otherwise go upstairs There is huge argument taking place between Mrs. Pearson and others. Later, Mr. George, Cyril, and Doris leaves the room. It is going out of limit. Let's return back to our original bodies. But why? No, I can't stand any more of it. Okay, quiet now and relax. This fits all. Again, spell some mantras. And they change back to their own bodies and personalities. Oh well, I enjoyed it. but i didn't okay don't tell them to say you sorry okay i won't but remember keep firm or you have had it ho oh, you can come in now everyone join them the room i'm just off to let you enjoy yourself no objection i hope No mother whatever you say Shall we play mummy children you get the dinner ready while i have a talk with your father That suit me what about you two We will I think it would be lovely Now Mr George Cyril and Doris understood that they were doing wrong behavior with Mrs Annie Pearson we would respect we should respect our mother because they do lot for us which is not considered as work by us the sacrifice they make for us can never be measured and they even sacrifice their desires and longings for our comfort and amenity so we should not traumatize their feelings and give them regard and admire them for what they have done for us
let us all listen to a song which tell us that moms are unmatchable and let's us see and enjoy what all our what all mothers does for us It's a song from my mommy. How to spot? Give me an M. Uh -huh. M. M. <laughs> Give me an O. Give me an o. 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 Give me an M. 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 What's that spell? <laughs> if you have a stroller, but you're still a rock and roller, you're a mom. You're a mom. If you're tired of doing dishes and you know who all those fish is, you're a mom. from this act the message of how important a mother is to a house without our uh, with her our life would be incomplete the whole house would be a mess i thank god that he gave me an amazing and lovingly mother and i'm grateful to her now i want to end this whole session with a small poem which is to one who bears the sweetest smile and add luster to the same long life to her for there is no other who take the place of my lovely mother thank you all for joining us <laughs>